Hey everyone, Taco here and I hope you're doing well. And today we're going to talk about one of the features of the latest Nikon Z9 firmware 4.0 set of features that I think is a real game changer. And that is the auto capture feature. Now this mode allows your camera to essentially be a, a camera trap for a lack of a better word. Uh, you set your camera remotely somewhere and depending on the trigger that you set it to, it will actually capture burst modes of images or uh, video depending on what you select. Now the trigger mode can be one of three things. You can have it triggered from motion detection, area detection, and also distance detection. Now I was only uh, testing this in terms of area detection. I tried it just in my backyard with the little birds that visited me. So let's go check out what I found. So once I press start on the auto capture settings, I get this target area selection where you have your various options. Now, let's see what we have here. We have on the top left, our subject detection mode that's enabled and all the other boxes that are disabled are actually grayed out a little bit and on the right top section you have your subject detection mode with my animal detection enabled with a size of one right beneath that we have my recording time which is uh, one second of video once it detects the animal and then after it takes that one second of video, it will pause for five seconds before enabling the subject detection mode again. So that's how this screen is red. Now, once we press OK there, you can see where my focus box is directly above the tree stump there. And that's where I want the camera to focus whenever the birds come there. So once I press start, we go photos that I took with the auto capture feature with the Nikon Z9. Now we can see in this folder I have over 4800 images. My settings were essentially set to 20 frames per second in raw mode and I had it at movement detection with the subject detection mode of animals and uh, as soon as it detected any movement of an animal form I had it set to take one second of pictures, pause for five seconds before it reverted back to movement detection mode again. And I was actually impressed. Uh, it actually captured a lot of images, as you can see here. And uh, it did it right out of the box without me having to tinker with uh, not many things. And uh, you can even see, if we zoom in here to 100%, you can see that this sparrow is, in fact, tack sharp. Uh, and the female uh, cardinal here is watching the sparrow eat uh, some food. Now it isn't without its flaws as it did misfire in, in focusing in some cases and I'll show you in a little bit later that it actually took my arm as a an animal form and it actually took pictures of my arm for whatever reason. Um, so there are uh, in cases where I do need to tinker with the settings by no means have I uh, actually tinkered with every single setting of this auto capture mode so there still does need to be some testing done on my part but for what I did out of the box I am very impressed with it you can see here that now it actually focused on the belly of the blue jay here but uh, let me go back here if I scroll through the other images you can see the 20 frames per second and the little jumps that you see there are when it paused for five seconds before it actually reverted back to the uh, detection mode so there you saw that it was actually focusing somewhere else instead of the sparrows but now you can see that it is in fact the sparrows that it's focusing on right there it is tack sharp right there as he's eating and let's move further on to see if we can find anything else um, I have to admit that leaving the camera alone and letting it do its thing and uh, that allowed me to do actually more things uh, more work inside was great and uh, I had the pleasure of knowing that the camera is actually taking pictures now here is a cardinal. Let's see 
what happened in this particular case. So this was, oh, the kernel was actually moving. So in this particular case, my shutter speed was a little too slow at 1 320th of a second. Uh, so once the kernel stopped moving, it should have focused a lot better. Let's see if there's anything else of interest here. We have two sparrows that are one. The father sparrow is actually eating or feeding the baby sparrow there. Uh, so those precious moments uh, that I was able to capture probably wouldn't have happened if I was standing right there with a camera right in their faces. So we're in video mode, auto capture. And go to start. And this is where you actually set up your settings for auto capture. I have it set to auto detection. Uh, not motion, not distance, but just the detection, uh, subject detection. And I've set my subject detection to right here to animal and subject size of one which means it's the very smallest uh, subject size so that will enable me to capture uh, more variety of subjects uh, because of the small size now that I'm done that I've set it to animal detection. Now recording wise, I've set it to record a video of 10 seconds. And after the video is shot for 10 seconds, it will then wait for another five seconds before it enables the auto detection. So that's what I wanted to do. And that's the settings for this particular session. And I'm going to start by pressing the video uh, icon right there, video button right there, and that's it. You see the auto capture icon there is flashing, and that means I am on auto capture. And I'm just gonna step away from the location here, and, uh, oh, actually I noticed one thing here. Notice I'm at 4K30, which was my intended, uh, video resolution. I'm at NRAW, but my shutter speed is at 1 250th at f4 ISO 800. That's actually not the shutter speed that I want. So, notice here I can actually change my settings no matter what I do here because I'm in auto capture mode. If I want to change my settings, I have to actually stop auto capture mode, pressing this button right there, and then I have to actually set my settings accordingly like so something like that you know what i'm at iso 800 i'm able to oh look at that i'm actually able to go to low one which i believe is now iso 640 so now i have a little bit more leeway to uh stop or open up my aperture. So I'm at 1 60th f5.6 at low 1.0 ISO. And you can see I'm actually on the low end right there. I can actually bring this a little bit up uh, just because I know my waveform here, I'm a little bit in my shadow areas, but this should be okay. So let's start my auto capture once more. And there we go. Now I'm at 160th, 5.6, low 0.7, at 4K, 30, and raw. And I'm just going to wait until uh, I see something. So let's see what happens. So there's another example that I wanted to show you, a, another set of photos that I managed to capture of Little Chippy 
uh, who just happened to take one of the peanuts away from the stump. So I'm just going to scroll through uh, all the JPEGs. There's about 400 of the JPEGs that I, I'm going to scroll through the photos so you can take a look at every single photo as if it's like a video mode. A little chippy uh, exploring the woods and he found a peanut and he actually just jumped off the uh, stump there uh, after grabbing the peanut. So let's scroll through the images there. I managed to get him jumping. Now it loses focus as soon as he jumps since my focus is set directly on to the top of the stump there. Now as soon as the other bird uh, the female cardinal comes. You can see how the crown is sticking up there and now it's down when the sparrow is there. So you have a nice intimate moment with the sparrow and the cardinal. And now the male cardinal comes. So we have a little party up on the stump there. I'm just scrolling right through my hundreds of images that I captured with the auto capture mode on the Nikon Z9. And there you have it. That is the auto capture feature of the Nikon Z9, now available as a firmware 4.0. Now that's just one feature out of so many other features and additions that Nikon added to the Z9 camera. So if you haven't already, I urge you to upgrade to the firmware 4.0 and check those features out for yourself. Thanks so much for watching my video. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.